Imagine if we were allowed to start our salah and to use, I'm not going to use the term prayer because now you know what I'm talking about. Prayer, according to what I believe, uh, is a terminology that's only used to refer to salah which is not actually translated as prayer in its whole sense. Okay, can I explain that a little bit earlier? So, imagine if we were allowed to have that in all our languages. So, how would we translate Allahu Akbar? Can someone say it? Someone say it? Allah is the greatest. That's one. And secondly, Allah is greater. That's another one. Akbar. Akbaru means greater. It can refer to the greatest. It can refer. Allah is the greatest. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Someone might say, well, let's analyze the term Allah as well. You know, why should I say Allah is the greatest? You know, I rather say my maker is the greatest, but actually that's a wrong translation. But I could say the worshipped one is the greatest because Al-Ma'luhu Hu Allahu. You go back to the Arabic language, Allah is the worshipped one. Who is the worshipped one? Whoever made me. So I can say whoever made me is the worshipped one and the worshipped one is the greatest. We would argue all night about what exactly to say. Solve your problem, just say Allahu Akbar and everything is done. Okay. Secondly, what would happen to the Quran? The Quran is the word of Allah, right? That's what we believe. It's the word of Allah. But the English language translation is only man's attempt to explain to you what he believes is the closest to that which Allah meant by his words. That's all. That's the reason why generally when you find a translation Quran, it is very strongly encouraged to have the Arabic on one side and the English in order to you know, to act as an indemnity to say, you know what, listen to this. This is the word of Allah. This is just my attempt to explain to you what I believe is the closest explanation for that word of Allah. I could be wrong. Man's translation can be wrong, but the word of Allah is never wrong. This is why today someone was asking me, what's the best translation? And I said, you know what, Sahih International, together with the explanations of the context text of the revelation of the verses plus an explanation of those verses that are not easily understood by the people with a little commentary and that would be much better than just a word for word translation just like the bible i've read the bible the old testament the new testament and i can tell you something there is a lot that can be misunderstood from it. If you don't know the context, you don't know how to understand it. You don't know, you know, the deeper knowledge of it. You won't understand it in its totality. The same applies to the Quran. You may not understand it. You will need explanation. Some of those verses, a lot of them you will understand. But mashallah, if you want to derive benefit, you are going to need to learn from someone. You're going to need to ask questions. I mean, you will see verses that have a context that is very different from what people are trying to make it seem sometimes. Different context. So my brothers and sisters, if I were to read in a different language, we would argue over the meaning of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to God, Lord of the, praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. That's what most would say, right? Someone would say, no, 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 you can't say that. You actually, and then we would start arguing and so on. Instead of getting on with our prayer, we would be debating over what exactly is the meaning, the precise meaning, okay? You know what Allah says? You have to do it in the Arabic language. Number one, we promise that we're going to preserve the book one of the ways of preserving the book is to make sure that every muslim on earth whether they speak arabic or not memorizes at least three short chapters that won't take you longer than 24 hours to memorize in order for them to be able to fulfill this prayer the way we want them to fulfill it so that every muslim on earth will have contributed towards the preservation of the Quran by knowing a minimum of three chapters of this Quran off by heart without even knowing its meaning at times. But they know the pronunciation. Look at this young boy. Do you speak Arabic? You don't. He read Surah Al-Fatiha. He read it eloquently, clearly. He read it with the rules and regulations, almost all of them. And he doesn't know Arabic. 
Isn't this book preserved? How is it preserved? The non-Arabs are reading it at times better than the Arabs.